Hey guys, welcome back to another Down and Dirty with Rick here from Diesel and Iron. Today, we've had a request and we're going to start trying to get back to the comments that you guys have asked for. But what would I do today on starting a business in the economy and the world that we're in today? Um, just a 10,000 view looking down. If I was in the industry and I had some experience, what I'd be looking for is an old 550 dump 550 dump truck, um, something I could haul a yard or two of material in. I could pull some machines around. Um, whether it's finding the niche, kind of doing some silt fence, because that's always a rugged job to get into, um, which always leads to more work, whether it's with a lawnmower or a skid steer or a mini digger or augering some holes. Um, I'd get a 10 ton, 20 ton trailer, something that could go behind a dump truck that it could handle. Trying to maximize the biggest machine you could carry, maybe an eight ton excavator. I don't know, I'd have to do the, sounds about right that it would fit that truck in the trailer. But, you know, something that could carry a decent sized machine to a small little machine. A versatile machine that has ramps, not just a flat, not just a flatbed dovetail with no ramps. I'd have ramps of some sort. Um, something I could bind down trees to, whether I put some stakes on the sides or, you know, binding down some equipment or carrying sods on pallet or getting landscape pavers or bricks, anything like that on a pallet. So that's what I'd be looking for for the trailer too with the truck. Um, possibly something that might have a snow plow or salter for up here in Michigan or somewhere that's winter time. Um, you know, there's going to be four wheel drive, two wheel drive, and then the equipment, I would really just kind of look at the rental game, honestly getting started because one size doesn't fit all. So I would go with it as a rental. Um, once you kind of start finding your niche, a 259B cat size, um, skid steer is a good size. You think I know the case? I think it's like a 240 or 270 something like that i love the case machines as you can see the hat but i'm not really good with all their size i just know the equipment that i own um something that's too small for a lot of the jobs but yeah it fits the mold and it's too big for the next job that makes sense it'll fit and get the job done but it's not the ideal machine those always seem to be a pretty good niche um sometimes you go with a really small machine you really get buried on the job and you get too big of a machine and don't fit the small jobs at all. I'd look for an excavator if you're looking, you know, an eight ton size machine. Excavator is a pretty good size. It's big enough for the small jobs and it's small enough for the big jobs. What do I mean by that? It's too big for the small jobs and yet it's way too small for the big jobs, but it gets it done. It's not the ideal machine, but it fits every freaking job. Most of the time. Uh, we just done a septic the other day. That eight ton machine barely got through the gate with like two inches. But once we got to the backyard, we dug a hole pretty quick. We were moving dirt around really fast. And yet it was too big to be even on the job. And it was perfect. It was perfect for the digging. And it was perfect for the backfilling. It was too big that, believe it or not, we had to pull it off the job site and park it in the road so we get the skid steer in. That's what I mean. Uh, you don't want to be out there with like a little, I don't even know how small those little guys are. Like a two ton excavator, the little things that the plumbers will draw on. I don't know. Uh, digging a septic field. You, you don't want something like that digging three or five feet deep, 1400 square feet. You don't want that kind of material moving 700 tons or 300 tons. It's too small. You're going to be there for months. Um, yeah, that's exaggeration, but you don't want to be out there that long. So that's really what I'd be looking at. Um, try, trying to pick up scraps from other contractors. A lot of times there's a lot of BS kind of jobs to a lot of contractors that are in the industry that just don't really have the time. And you can make a lot of money off of the scraps off of other contractors just kind of going, Hey, just want to let you know I'm in the industry. If there's any leftover work, whether it's a building a hand wall you know, retain wall by hand or ripping out some bushes or a little bit of drain tile, just something that you guys would be interested in, toss it my way. So I'd kind of let people know that I'm out there 
And that's what I'd be looking for to fit the mold. Something that maybe you're even throwing a zero turn mower on or a brush hog, renting a tractor with a brush hog. Some guy wants to freaking build a house on a five acres and I don't know, you gave him a price of a thousand bucks to go knock it down. I don't really know. As long as you're making money and you have the right machines and you have insurance, that's really where I'd kind of start with it all. Start testing the waters and get something that's going to be big enough as you start to grow. Because let's face it, if you stick it out long enough, you're going to... You're going to start finding decent size work. The more you build your company, the better off you're going to be out on the market, advertising, word of mouth. Someone's going to walk up and go, hey, I seen, I seen you guys down there doing this. Can you come over to my project in my house and come take a look at what I'm trying to do? Might put you in a scenario where all of a sudden you need to move like a little D3 bulldozer over to this guy's dude and push a hillside over. I don't know what that looks like. But if you start off with the right foundations on just trying to find the perfect truck and trailer for a really light to medium duty truck, nothing that breaks the bank. Same with the equipment. Once you start working, a skid steer is really versatile. It's like the Swiss Army knife because you could get endless amounts of attachments, it seems like. Um, no matter what the size and kind of do some dirt work with it or do some land clearing or do some trenching or forestry mulching or heck they even got silt fence attachments that go to these things anymore something that you're going to work a lot more than you want to rent because you're going to be putting a decent amount of hours on that's when you kind of start making those decisions on what you're looking for for the equipment and the price point what you're getting into i hope that helps you guys with the 10,000 view just looking down if you're looking for something a little bit more specific and you want to get into a little more detail, just take along. We're, we're breaking into helping you guys along. We just did a couple videos on the material takeoff and we did some stuff on finding like what your cost is. Go back in the videos and take a look, guys. I hope these things are helping you. Got any questions you want to learn a little bit more? Just keep asking, guys. Brian and Hyde, this is what we're doing. This is part of our business and our industry that we love to get into. And just trying to open up that book of knowledge, guys, that you want to see. Obviously, we're not going to go too deep on some of the stuff because there's different range and different uh, mindsets that are out there. And there's a lot of good people in the industry, guys. So with that being said, we'll catch you on the next one.